Just like my employer's HR department and our emotional support programs, airsoft replicas are just an imitation of a real thing. But real guns are designed with a purpose. And sometimes, the cool design features of a real weapon platform can translate into its airsoft version. Today, we're going to take a look at my airsoft PP-19 Bison, one of the strangest looking guns in my collection. What are its features? Are they viable? How do you actually shoot this thing? Coming up. The real PP-19 Bison is a Russian-made select fire submachine gun with a lot of similarities to the AKS-74. It was designed to provide fast, sustained fire at close range. Its 64-round helical magazine runs horizontally to the receiver, giving it a smaller profile and allowing it to easily fit inside of a vehicle or other close quarters area. Its small size and large magazine capacity makes it a close friend to Russian counter-terrorist operatives and police units. And yeah, it might look weird, but it's designed to perform. Much like the Romanov family, the Russians really killed it with this design. There's a few airsoft bisons available out there, but this particular model is the SEMA version. SEMA's known for their well-built, mid-level AK AEGs. This one costs around $200, and it's built like a rock. If you're looking to buy an airsoft PP-19, this is the one I would save up for. A lot of unusual airsoft guns have proprietary parts that are difficult to replace if they break down. That's not the case with the PP-19. Internally, it's powered by a version 3 gearbox, an AK-style hop-up unit, and a short-type motor, which makes it really easy to fix and upgrade. It's also cross-compatible with a lot of AK-AEG parts. Really, the only thing that separates this from a regular AK-AEG is this gigantic magazine. So, at the back of the gun, you have an AK-style folding stock that latches to a peg at the front. To release it, lift up on the stock, it folds out and clicks into place. To release the stock, there's a button here on the left side. Looking at the full receiver, you might notice that it looks very similar to a regular AK. And that's because the real version of this was based on that exact platform. You have an AK style grip, trigger, mag release, and fire selector. Middle is full and bottom is semi. Top is safe and it prevents the ejection port from being pulled back. If you take a close look at it, you'll notice that this ejection port is really small. That's because the real version of the PP-19 fires a pistol caliber cartridge, the 9x18 Makarov. The real chambering is actually molded into the side of the magazine, which is a nice feature. Iron sights are just adjustable AK sights. On the left side of the replica, you have a regular AK style rail that you can attach a rail adapter to and attach optics and lasers, whatever your heart desires. The handguard up here is pretty interesting. It looks like a regular AK handguard, but it's made of metal and it's all stretched out. And also, there's no bottom part to it. So obviously, the most notable feature of this gun is the gigantic magazine, which hooks into these pegs at the front, clips into place, and look at that, it doubles as your lower handguard. And while the magazines look strange, they're actually not that bad. They're held in place with a regular AK style clasp, which you release and it pops right out. It's really easy. Okay, so it's got a big old magazine, a lot of similarities to an AK and a folding stock, but does that make it viable for airsoft? What's it like to use this thing? I think the obvious takeaway is that out of the box, this thing's great for indoor fields. At close range, you can take advantage of the Bison's small size. Even though it's a little on the heavy side, with a collapsed stock, it's only 48.3 centimeters long, which actually makes it shorter than a P90. The SEMA PP-19 comes with a 190 round mid-cap magazine, but it's compatible with 1,000 round high caps. Now, if I can help it, I run mid-caps in all of my AEGs. They feed better than high caps and you don't have to wind them. But for the PP-19, I might actually suggest that you run it with a high cap. 
All right, let me explain. I know battle maracas aren't for everybody. In real life, the PP-19 64 round helical magazine allows it to provide sustained fire at close range. A 190 round mid cap isn't a whole lot more than a regular M4 140 round mid cap. I understand for milsim and other realism factors, you might have to use a mid cap, but you're missing out on this gun's main advantage, which is its gigantic magazine size. I mean, look at this thing. It fits a thousand rounds. This means the airsoft version should be a pocket LMG. Something that's fast, mobile, something you can whip out and provide a ton of sustained fire at a moment's notice. Take advantage of this thing's gigantic magazine capacity and lay down some plastic hate on those fools. That's what it's supposed to do. Given the position, shape, and size of these magazines, it makes it awkward to carry extras in the field, not to mention reload these things under pressure. As I've talked about before, your gear should help you play the game. So if you're running a PP-19, you need to have the gear to back it up. You can buy Russian surplus gear, but that's usually on the expensive side. What I would suggest is looking at paintball pod holders. They look like they're the right size and shape to carry PP-19 mags, and some of them are sold with mil-spec colors, so you can match them to the kit that you already have instead of building a whole new loadout. External customization is obviously pretty limited. What you see is what you get, but in my opinion, what you get is good enough on its own. Folding the stock allows you to run it in an SMG or rifle configuration depending on what you need, and adding a rail adapter gives you the option of attaching optics or lasers. Internally, version 3 compatibility gives you a lot of customization options that you might not find in an unconventional gun like this. For example, my Bison has an upgraded motor that increases the rate of fire and helps it fulfill the SMG role a bit better. Give this thing an internal makeover and other players will have to think twice before writing it off as another wall hanger. All right, so like most airsoft guns, it's all about how you use it. But let's break it down. What are the advantages and disadvantages of using the Bison? On one hand, it's small, easy to handle. It has a collapsible stock for extra stability if you need it. It's got gigantic magazines, and it's easy to fix and upgrade because it uses AK AEG parts. On the other hand, its full metal body makes it a little bit heavy. External upgrades are there, but they're kind of limited. Carrying extra magazines is relatively difficult if you don't have the right gear, and using a high cap magazine is kind of this gun's biggest strength. So, is it viable? The Airsoft Bison should be an LMG in a bite-sized package. Its potential firepower is only limited by what you put inside of it. It's usable on an indoor field as a run-and-gun SMG, or on an outdoor field in a more conventional role. In a pinch, it can lay down suppressive fire, or just be used as a regular close to mid-range airsoft gun. When you exploit the wealth of BBs at your disposal and compensate for its more unconventional features, I think you're left with an airsoft gun that more than pulls its weight on the field. So yeah, I think it's viable, but you gotta give it some love. I know, this is a short video and we didn't touch on all the features of the Bison, but I want to know what you think. Would you run a Bison? Did I change your mind? Let me know in the comments. We'll continue the conversation there. And of course, if you look at some of our other corporate approved content, my employers have afforded me a wealth of tactical weaponry. Take a look at what we have and let me know what you want to see next. Stay corporate approved.